Hi everyone, it's been a few weeks since we spoke. So here we are again talking about the SBI alternatives business. I'm Sumera Apti and with me I have Gaurav Mehta. He's a chief investment officer of the SBI alternatives business. So Gaurav, SBI Optimal Equity AIF, uh, you know, it's this category three uh, long shot strategy, but it's seen some lumpy returns, right? Uh, so how is the fund looking to manage itself during, pe uh, during periods of, uh, you know, market euphoria and what are you doing to communicate to investors about the associated volatility within the fund? So I think, uh, you know, you use two phra phrases, you know, lumpy returns and volatility. Uh, I would like to sort of clarify that uh, if you look at the absolute returns on the fund, uh, they tend to be more consistent than what you see on Nifty. And volatility as measured through simple measures like standard deviation for the fund is actually much lower than the Nifty's uh, volatility. So to that extent, I don't think that the returns are inconsistent or lumpy or volatile, uh, whatever you call it. But yes, when you start looking at the returns on relative basis on versus what the index has delivered or versus what the Nifty has delivered, then obviously, you know, a long shot strategy uh, outcomes will look very different than the index's outcome. And so on the relative return, you will see some periods of very strong outperformance and some period of underperformance, and which is p p p potentially something that can lead to that perception of uh, lumpiness in investors' mind. And, you know, that is essentially a part and parcel of how the product is um, uh, sort of manufactured and managed. Uh, because we are doing multiple things. A, uh, we are running an asset allocation overlay on the stock portfolio. And we can move from 0% equity allocation all the way up to 130% equity allocation. And, you know, over the last year or so, we've been running around 60% uh, net equity allocation, which is a function of our asset allocation framework. Uh, now, when you're running 60% uh, equity allocation, then obviously, you know, you can't expect index like uh, outcomes on every yeah. monthly or weekly or for that matter, even a quarterly basis. The second aspect is that uh, when you look at our portfolio, it's a multi-cap uh, portfolio. Uh, and when you look at Nifty, obviously, it's all large cap dominated. Uh, if you look at the last four months, for example, uh, the Nifty has done its own thing, but the broader markets have been very different. So Nifty is up, I think, 11% or so uh, from November until March end. Uh, an average small cap would have delivered some 3.8% returns over this period. Uh, in fact, you know, it's interesting to note that uh, one third of BSE 500 stocks have actually been negative in absolute returns over this four month period, when, while the Nifty has moved up by 11. Uh, so to that extent, you know, when you're running a, a, a multi-cap strategy, which is scattered uh, across the market cap spectrum, that again brings a degree of, uh, you know, different uh, results versus what you would expect from a Nifty. And the third aspect is that, uh, you know, uh, the fundamental attributes of our portfolio are such that we tend to run uh, very high ROE and low leverage uh, in our portfolios uh, from, a, from a company selection point of view which essentially means that the beta of the equity component is also uh, low. So when you think of these three things in, uh, you know, combination, which is that A, uh, uh, the net equity allocation is lower than 100% and it's been the case over the last 12 months or so. Uh, then you also bring in the fact that, uh, you know, the portfolio is multi-cap and not large cap in nature. And the third aspect that the beta itself is low would mean that uh, the portfolio will have very different outcomes uh, than the index. But again, uh, you know, as I said earlier, when you think of it in terms of volatility, the standard deviation on absolute returns for this product is actually much lower than the index. And that to us is the essential sort of focus in this portfolio. Uh, on an end-on-end -end basis, we do want to generate Nifty Plus returns. Uh, but the bigger objective is that whenever there are big drawdowns in the market, we should fall much lower than the uh, index. So curtailing risk is at uh, the heart of this portfolio. Uh, while obviously not losing fo focus of the return objective. Uh, and uh, and which is why, you know, that consistent return is actually the philosophy of the portfolio, not the other way around. But yeah, on relative basis, things can look very different. All right, fair enough. Uh, you've spoken, you know, uh, quite a fair bit about what to expect from this fund. But uh, for potential investors, uh, you know, who are listening to you, uh, what would you say in terms of what's an ideal time horizon uh, to remain invested and anything else that, uh, you know, they should know about the strategy? So I think, uh, you know, essentially, uh, I'll start at what the fund is doing, right, uh, at the very basic level. So I think the fund is an overlay of two different strategies. We are running about a 70% long only stock portfolio. As I said earlier, this stock portfolio is across the, spread out across the market cap spectrum. 
what we are overlaying on top of the 70% long stock portfolio is an asset allocation overlay such that at points we can move down to 0% allocation and at the other extreme we can also move up to 130% allocation. So 0 to 130 is a net equity allocation region in this product. Uh, when we want to come down to 0, we don't touch the 70% stocks but we short index to the extent of 70% that takes you down to 0. And when you go, want to go up to 130, you keep that 70% stocks but you add uh, you know, long exposure through index derivatives to the extent of 60 and that takes you all the way to 130. And this move from 0 to 130 in turn is uh, determined by our asset allocation framework where we tend to look at um, market valuations, uh, we've quantified market sentiment and earnings, right? And that combination dictates where you are within that 0 to 130 percent range. Uh, so I think for investors, uh, A, you know, this asset allocation will work very well when there's a big volatility in the markets, right? So if there's a big drop and if we are able to protect ourselves during that drop, it helps the investor. And then on the subsequent uh, uh, recovery after that drop, hopefully, you know, in that drop, market sentiment would be pessimistic, valuations will be cheap, and our asset allocation framework would ask you, us to go towards 130. So we can actually sort of move up at 130% participation. But then there will be these in-between periods where we are at 60%, 70% net equity allocation, which, is, which has been the case for the past year or two. Uh, and then, you know, uh, so, you know, you have to give at least a three, four year time frame to the fund for you to see these different uh, parts of the asset allocation cycle uh, come into play. Uh, and then the second aspect is the stock selection piece itself. Uh, uh, and as I sort of explained earlier, we tend to be very multi-cap oriented in our approach with some skew towards mid and small caps because that's where we think there's a lot of research arbitrage still available. And that in itself means that, you know, if you are in the uh, mid and small cap domain, you are, again, you should allow yourself three, four years of investments at least uh, to experience the benefits of that stock selection piece. So whether you think of it in terms of asset allocation or the stock selection, we think investors should keep a three, four year time frame. And uh, their expectation from the fund should be that you want to generate uh, a nifty plus return. So this is not the kind of long shot where we are just targeting debt plus returns, we are targeting equity like returns. Uh, but the key thing that we are trying to achieve is that whenever there are big falls in the market, we should fall much lower than the index. So, which in turn should also mean that the volatility of the product should be lower than the index. So, which, you know, nifty plus returns, but with significantly lower risk would create a risk reward uh, proposition, which is superior to other funds. That's the objective. All right, Gaurav, thanks so much.